Barakathaya Hawa, Barakathaya Hawa Shah, Barakathaya Hawa, Barakathaya Hawa Shah. I want to give all praise to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Rakakadash. And I want to give double honors to the elders, the apostles, and great millstone. And Baraka Thumb to all you brothers that's out here in this truth and in this faith. And I want to go into this article on CNN that I seen posted about two days ago, but I saved the article. And the title of this article, and it's on CNN, how technology is changing what it means to be human. And this is all about pushing this is all about pushing that the mark of the beast, which is the IFR, the IFRD chip, okay? The mark of the beast is the IFRD chip. Okay. And I'm gonna read this first this first section right here. And it says advances in prosthetics, implants, and bioengineering are allowing us to alter ourselves in new and unprecedented ways, not only to beautify or overcome deficiencies, but to enhance and exceed our current capabilities. And this is all about pushing that RFID chip. This is all about bringing basically their new world order, which, which really won't happen. But it's all about it's all about pushing their agenda, okay? And now we're gonna skip right down into the bottom because I want to read this part. Neil Neil Harbison cyborg and designer of artificial senses now if this ain't pushing what they want then you just don't got the eyes to see it man now neil harbison is the world's first legally recognized cyborg okay he has an antenna implanted in his skull which transposes color into audible vibrations. Since 2010, Harbison has run Cyborg Foundation, an online platform dedicated for researching and developing artificial senses, promoting cyborg art, and defending <laughs> and defending cyborg rights. Okay. Now they said this man is the first legally recognized cyborg, meaning that people who's gonna get these chips in their hands and in their and in their foreheads, these people that's gonna get this market of beast, technically they wanna be viewed as cyborgs. They wanna be viewed as something more than human. Okay. And and that's all the push to get people to want these RFID chips. That's all. This is all a big scheme to get you to want to get that uh, the mark of the beast. And when you get that mark of the beast, man, you 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 done for. You doomed. You dead. Basically, you get the mark of the beast. You are dead. I'm just saying the truth. You get that mark of the beast when them when them nuclears hit, when them nuclear bombs hit, hit America, man. You're gonna be turned into ash, man. You're gonna be turned into a fine powder, man. Now, now this art this uh little paragraph right here. Says I define what I do as neuro hacking rather than bio or body hacking because my ultimate aim is to change the mind, but in order to do so, I have to change my body. Okay. 
This is all a push to get people to want the mark of the beast. Now I'm going to skip down into this article because they're talking about three different people on this article, but only two of them are even worth reading. Now, this guy, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but who cares? Amal Grafstra, Invisible Biohacker. Since, 2004, since 2005, Amal has had multiple chips, RFID tags, RFID tags, and even a magnet implanted into his hands, arms, and upper body. He is the form he is the founder of Dangerous Things, a biohacking firm, Viv Vivico Key, a digital identity platform aiming to make secure implants accessible to everyday customer. To everyday customers, okay? And this is this is basically, <laughs> this is the beginning of the end, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm going to read this one. This, it says, I've always been fascinated by technology when I started doing, you know what, we don't even, I'm not even going to get into that. It's just, here we go, right here, right here. Now I'm going to read this part. This is the part I wanted to get. If an implant is designed well, in other words, it's frictionless, managementless, and you give it as much thought as you do your kidneys. In other words, none at all. Then it's part of you. It's not a tool that you picked up like a smartphone. It's actually changing your capabilities as a human. That's philosophically, fundamentally, and as I'm sure we're destined to see, legally different from any tool. Legally different from any tool because they plan to make these RFID chips mandatory for everyone. It's going to be mandatory for everyone. And if you don't, and if you don't get this RFID chip, you're going to be persecuted. The 144,000 elect will be persecuted. The ones whose lots is not destined Basically, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, he has to be with you, man. He has to put that spirit on you to resist that mark of the beast. To resist that RFID chip. Because it will try us. It will try. Man. This stuff is just, man. <laughs> it's happening right before our eyes, man. You see, you see what the government is going to do is, is they going to make these fake terrorist attacks, you know, make these fake terrorist attacks and they going to blame it on the prophets. They're going to blame it on the prophets on YouTube and they going and they going to use clips of the prophets saying things like death to America. Saying how y'all gonna die by these nuclear missiles that's gonna hit America and we're gonna be persecuted. And these things are gonna be happening. And when it's happening, is they gonna try to they're gonna try to find out a way to stop it. And they're gonna implement the plan, this plan, the RFID chips, which they've been already which they've been already gearing you towards to. They've already been pointing you into, into the direction of the RFID chip. 
and they gonna have this thing set up as to as if you don't if you if you refuse to get this RFID chip, they're gonna be like, man, what's wrong with you? You don't want us, you don't want us watching your every move because these terrorist attacks will be going on. And people are gonna see that you don't have this RFID chip because you're not gonna be able to buy or sell. You're not gonna be able to to buy your everyday needs that you need. That's why the elect, the 144,000, will have Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai guiding them in that time. In that time, the elect will know who they are. And you can see an x-ray of these dudes of this dude's hand you see he has an rfid chip in both his hands and this article says it says fear of technology is rampant the fact that my augmentations are internal they're not visible definitely helps in terms of my daily interactions i'm not I don't typically have to worry about stigma or prejudice from the unaugmented, the typical visual cues that would normally betray the fact that I'm different or just not there. Most biohackers can choose to disclose their, arg their augmentations or decide to keep them private. Now this, this part, this part is where this just, this just really shows you that this is the mark of the beast right here. And I'm about to read the scripture before I read this next this next part right here. I'm about to read a scripture. Okay, this is Revelation 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, okay? In their foreheads. I want you to think about that. In their foreheads. They're going to get these RFID chips in their brains. And what's so funny about this, about this part right here, is because... Uh, what's his name? The CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk. In an article, and you can watch this on my last lesson in an article. He said that he's only months away from, from merging the first AI computer chip with a human brain. He's only months away. And now I'm going to go back to that CNN article. Okay. And here it is. I think a synaptic brain computer interface is kind of the holy grail. And that's talking about that brain computer chip right there. That brain computer chip. Imagine we had synaptic synaptis uh, salakia. Imagine we had synthetic synaps synapses that could dock and exchange neurotransmitter molecules with organic synaps synapses. We could pay a digital neural service to fire up a hundred billion extra neutrons to think through problems, then shut them down once we're done. It could intellectually free us as a species from the con from the confines of biology. And that means once you get this this chip in your brain, basically, they want to cure 
a bunch of diseases like Alzheimer's, paralysis, and other and other diseases like that. But mainly, they want they want to make this seem like as an upgrade, as an upgrade from a human. They want to make you they want to make you a cyborg. They want to connect your brain to the internet, to the internet of all things. So you'd be partly AI. You know how you go on your phone and Google something and get the answer. Well, think of that as not having a phone. You're going to have this database already in your head. That's what they want. The constant struggle to enhance our capabilities is the very definition of humanity. When they're literally able to physically expand our minds, do you see? They're li liter when we're literally able to digitally, to digitally expand our minds, we will begin transcending the human condition, meaning cyborg meaning half AI, meaning having all the answers in your head because they want to connect your brain to the internet of all things. And, and if you can't see that this is the mark of the beast, then you don't have the truth in you, man. And you, and you destined for death. You will die. Okay? And that's all I want to go into on this lesson. I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rukakadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and great millstone and Salawam to the elect.